The F-117 Nighthawk was a legendary aircraft in its time. It was the first true stealth fighter. Despite the U.S. Air Force's best attempts to keep its existence under wraps, public interest in the fighter only intensified since its first confidential flight in 1981, reaching a fever pitch upon the plane's formal introduction to the public in 1988. But the thing is, it could barely fly. For an aircraft to possess true stealth capabilities, it would have to sacrifice much of its aerodynamic stability. In 1964, the Soviet mathematician Pyotr Umfintsev published his seminal work, Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction. In this paper, he shared a striking analysis about how radar technology worked. The main determining factor for whether an object could be hidden from radar was the configuration of its edges, not its size. This information caught the attention of aircraft manufacturers around the world, as it meant even a large aircraft could be designed to avoid radar detection. As Soviet radar and anti-aircraft technology grew more formidable in the 1970s, the U.S. government saw a growing need for fighter aircraft that could avoid radar detection. After a decade-long absence from the fighter aircraft industry, Lockheed Skunk Works Division took on the challenge. Thus began its top-secret project, Have Blue. Having read Ufinsev's paper, Lockheed analyst Dennis Overholzer approached Dick Scherer, the project's preliminary designer, with a simple proposal for the design. For an aircraft to effectively evade enemy radar, it should be made out of flat, angular surfaces that reflect radar waves off its body. This was bolstered by the use of radar-absorbing ion ball paints that were magnetically charged to reduce radar returns. The plane's exhaust ports were also narrowed as much as possible to minimize infrared detection. After much difficulty turning the concept into a functional design, the first prototype was completed and sent on its maiden voyage in January 1977. Several more prototypes would follow, with the F-117 Nighthawk coming into existence in 1981. The world's first true stealth fighter had officially come into service. But with all of its stealth, flying the fighter was challenging, to say the least. Reportedly, one of the Nighthawk's first test pilots balked at the plane's design upon seeing it in person for the first time, and test pilots referred to the planes as wobbly goblins. Although the plane could fly, it did so with great difficulty. There is a reason it took almost 20 years after Ufintsev's paper was published for a stealth fighter to enter service. An aircraft with such an aerodynamically unstable design would require sophisticated onboard flight computers to maintain stable flight. Aside from its instability in the air, the Nighthawk was also relatively slow by design. For one, it lacked an afterburner to kick it into high gear. This was to minimize its infrared signature. Afterburners would also produce an exhaust trail visible to the naked eye, which would defeat the Nighthawk's purpose as a stealth fighter. These less powerful engines also meant that the Nighthawk was physically incapable of achieving supersonic flight. Again, this was a feature and not a defect. The sonic boom generated on breaking the sound barrier would make the plane very easy to detect. Due to it being relatively slow and difficult to handle, the Nighthawk was mostly utilized as a bomber. Thankfully, not all of the Nighthawk's stealth features came at the cost of its performance. The aircraft was covered in radar-absorbent sheets that weighed nearly one ton each. They were held in place by glue, with gaps between the sheets filled in by a putty, colloquially named butter. Despite its limitations in flight, the Nighthawk's stealth capabilities forever changed the way the U.S. fought its wars. Its presence in war zones would quickly come to represent the country's unique capability to outgun its opponents on the field before they even realized it. 
perhaps best known for its deployment during the Gulf War in 1991, the Nighthawk was responsible for direct hits on 1,600 high-value targets. However, in 1999, its role as a symbol of U.S. aerial superiority would come to an end. During a skirmish in Yugoslavia, a Nighthawk was shot down by a Soviet-era S-125, an obsolete anti-air missile system. Colonel Zoltan Dani and the 250th Air Missile Defense Brigade utilized a low bandwidth radar to cue the activation of a higher bandwidth at a time when the F-117 would be visible to it. He also employed a series of spotters to visually look for the plane, which was not invisible to the naked eye. With this technique, the seemingly untouchable aircraft was successfully shot down, the only one ever lost in combat. While the pilot ejected and was successfully rescued, the plane fell to the ground almost intact, allowing the Russian and Chinese to get their hands on it. This failure on the field led the U.S. Air Force to believe that the Nighthawk's tactical advantages had ceased to outweigh its shortcomings as an aircraft. The world's first stealth fighter would see its last few deployments in 2001's Operation Enduring Freedom and 2003's Operation Iraqi Freedom. It was formally retired in 2008, with a commencement ceremony taking place to pay tribute to its over 20 years of service. All of the planes were retired into a form of flyable storage and kept in near working conditions. Later aircraft produced by Lockheed would take advantage of guided ballistic systems and feature computer-aided designs that deflected radar without sacrificing aerodynamics. Despite its obsolescence, some still hold hope that the iconic aircraft will return to the skies. After multiple sightings since its supposed retirement, some speculate that the Nighthawk is still in service today as a stand-in jet for testing new stealth detection technology. This would truly bring the Nighthawk's journey full circle.